Hello and welcome to climbingalbris.com. My name is Dan Holiday, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use the fishing pole technique and why it can be really useful in the right situation. The benefit of this video is even if you're not going to use this fishing pole technique because it doesn't come around all that often it really shows you the the physics behind um, spreading load behind friction behind changing the angle of the force um, it it really is a good demonstration of all those things so it, it you know it makes you understand rigging a little bit easier even if you don't get around to using the fishing pole technique itself So the intention of this video is to demonstrate how beneficial the fishing pole technique for rigging can be with the right tree the, um, where it's necessary. So where you would really find this technique necessary is if you've got a, a tree that um, for some reason it kind of starts to grow on an angle, maybe it's been really shaded on one side of the tree and it really reaches over. Um, and grows on quite a bit of a lean and it needs to be rigged down but you want to ensure the safest operation possible for rigging so this demonstration I'm going to give you is going to really exaggerate what would happen if you were to rig just on the, a single point um, far out on the leaning tree and then what would happen if you set up a series of pulleys um, which is the, the fishing pole technique to help spread the load and how much difference that makes. So let's show you what would happen just on the one single point. Okay, so what we've got here with the setup, I've got a four kilogram kettlebell weight on the end. Um, don't ask me why I've got four kilogram kettlebell. I don't have a good answer for that. <laughs> um, so I've got the weight on the end and I've got the pulley attached really far out on this stem that's kind of leaning all the way out here um, so this is perfect to demonstrate this technique then you'll be able to see I've got one two three four five six extra pulleys that I'm going to use for the fishing pole technique um, I've also got this stick here that I can use as a bit of a marker to see how far this limb comes down and we can we can see how beneficial it is to use the technique so what we'll do first is I'll try and lift this weight just on the very end in a <coughs> in a line going straight down underneath the pulley which is obviously gonna add the most amount of force to this branch and it's as you can see it's really bending this small maple branch around now that's what we can well I don't even know if we get it off the ground because I don't want to snap the branch oh shit it's just off I think is that off yeah there we go we're, we're just off the ground um, where am I going to mark this there's, so there's a a nice obvious fork there so I'll just mark the stick adjacent to that fork on the maple branch you won't be able to see that but I'll just mark that I'll just mark it at the same spot every time now the stick is attached to that climbing box so that stick shouldn't move I'll make sure the branch isn't like resting on the stick or anything but you can see how much that that bent that maple branch down is a huge amount okay so that was the first test Second test I'll do is going through the pulley, the pulley on the very end, and then go directly to the the last pulley that's at the base of the tree. Because if you are rigging, you might go back through a porter wrap at the base, so it changes the the angle of the rope, so it changes the the force direction slightly of the load to kind of come down in here somewhere so that will that should change the the amount it pulls down on the limb so I'll just get my sh marker pen again okay so if I pull that it's, it's 
slowly, let's make sure nothing's resting on this stick that I've got. Okay, so it's off the ground. Okay, so that's quite a lot sooner. Uh, I'll mark adjacent to that same fork, which is there. Okay, so that changed the amount it pulled down on the the stem quite a lot. So my first mark was here, and my second mark was here. So that made a a big difference. Just adding that one pulley, changing the angle of of the force direction, <coughs> or the way that the force has been applied to the to the stem. Okay, so the next thing I'll do. I'm just going to add in every single pulley now because uh, there's no point in there's no point in adding like one in and two in I'm just going to add all of them in so we've done the test directly below pulling from directly underneath the pulley we've done a, the test with the one the last pulley included and now we're just going to add every single pulley Okay, pulling up. I already feel like more confident when I'm pulling. It, there we go. Because it obviously wasn't adding as much bend to the stem. Right, where's. So adjacent to that same fork again. And there we go. So I'll raise that back up. So the first mark was here, second mark was here, and then the third mark was there. So what is happening when you use the fishing pole technique is Obviously it's going through this first pulley, then that's sharing the load to this second pulley quite a lot because once that stem has bent over, it brings these pulleys pretty much at the same level. This pulley is a little lower, so it's sharing load there. This pulley is quite a bit lower, that's still sharing a bit of load, adding a little bit of friction. This pulley, I can feel it there's a bit of tension on there so that's taking a little bit of load this is taking a little bit of load and finally that last one is obviously taking quite a bit of load so each these two probably at this point sharing a similar amount of weight or taking a similar amount of weight each a little bit less and like and these ones only a little bit each um and the reason it's called the fishing pole technique is because on a fishing rod they have like the little rings all the way down so once you've got once you've caught caught that whopping big fish and the rod is like bending over you know it's sharing the load all the way along so it's the, the that's the principle here um, so there we go so the last test we'll do is rather than going through pulleys um, we'll go through carabiners which will simulate going through rigging rings so adding a bit more friction than a, than a pulley adds and the theory here is you go through the first carabiner so you add a bit of friction so it means there's slightly less force to the second carabiner a bit of friction a bit less force to the third carabiner a bit add a bit of friction so you just add in friction all the way down so for lowering it should reduce force a little bit all the way down as opposed to um, pulleys which a, a pulley is trying to be as efficient as possible um, the problem here it comes is if you need to raise anything but in this situation if you're just rigging straight down then friction is your friend 
if you're pulling back up, then friction is your enemy and you're gonna have to input so much more force. So let's see how that one affects the amount there, the maple branch bends. So there we go, I've gone for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carabiners this time. So, so trying to simulate going through rings. So it's a lot harder to pull because I've got a lot of friction. So I'm even going to have to help this up a little bit. Because it's actually quite hard to even pull that up. So obviously if you had to raise something using this technique, if you were going through rings, you're going to have to put so much force into it. But when it comes to when it comes to using this setup for lowering, this shows that rings or adding friction along the way is so much better because we've got even less movement now. So I'm going to put a mark trying to gauge where's adjacent to that fork that I was using as a marker and that's and that's quite you know quite a bit higher again so adding friction in this kind of a setup if you have you know if you have rings that you can use for this type of thing um, then that's better the only thing with rings is that you have to feed the rope through so obviously if you know you're going to use this setup set, set up all the all the rings first and then you, you can feed it through and it's not going to be that much extra effort but obviously with with rigging blocks that you can kind of open and close on the slings that'll be an easier way to add the rope in to the system but yeah so i'll release that so the first ever mark is there that was the second mark, that was the third mark going through all the pulleys and that is the fourth mark going through all of the carabiners to simulate rings. So you, it shows adding that extra friction, spreading the weight really does make a difference. So I hope you found this video useful and I feel like the benefit of this video is even if you're not going to use this fishing pole technique because it doesn't come around all that often it really shows you the the physics behind um, spreading load behind friction behind changing the angle of the force um, it it really is a good demonstration of all those things so it, it you know it makes you understand rigging a little bit easier even if you don't get around to using the fishing pole technique itself uh, thanks a lot for watching and um, be sure to check out some of these other videos that I've got available and um, climb safe. Thanks a lot.